What's up, YouTube? Welcome to another YouTube exclusive. It's been a long time since I've done a YouTube exclusive. And it's also the first time that I've done sponsored content here on this channel. This video is sponsored by Deck of Ashes, and there is a link down in the description below. It takes you to their Steam store page so you guys can check out and buy the game. Now, I've, I've played this game before. I don't remember how long ago it was. It was many months ago, but they just recently re released this new character called Magnus. So I want to primarily check that out today. And a quick way to describe this game would be like, imagine a mismatch of Slay the Spider and the dark fantasy campaign RPG based of... Dungeons and Dragons, for instance. So there's multiple heroes that you can play, and you're combining the roguelike deck building elements that we love with a story-based campaign of whatever character you're playing at that time. And I remember I, I, this has some unique mechanics that I really like and maybe want to get into while we play. Let me just do a refresher, and let's try the new character. All right, so I brushed up on the tutorial, and I'm going to play the campaign now. I'm going to try to talk about the things that are going on so that you guys can try to follow along. Because I mainly want to look at the new character Magnus, which is a brand new character, and there's another character coming out later this year. So let's go ahead and make a new game. So these are the characters you can play. You got Lucid the Eternal Flame, which is also the girl you play in the tutorial. Sly the Black Serpent. Buck the Rush Best Bestial Rage. I messed that one up. And this is the one, the new one, the Ugly Jester. J Magnus was a jester at the King's Court, where he was laughed at every day. However, it was he who first found out about the Ash Box. He was the weakest of the outcasts, but he was also the most conniving, and now values the power given to him by the Ash Curse most greatly. Magnus is driven by ambition, hunger for power, and desire to get to Lady Death, since not all the power of hers had been sealed in the box. Ambition. So... There's a couple of uh, difficulties we could choose here. We got Easy, Adventure, and Martyr. And I think for the sake of the experience, we'll do an easy run, right? Now we'll do Adventure, we'll keep it normal. An intense experience that will put your skills to a serious test. You have normal health, if killed in battle, you have to restart the game from the beginning, like most roguelikes. All roguelikes. You can perform a re resurrection right in the camp to avoid death. The cost of using an Ash Pack is reduced to 15 health points. Um... And hardest for another day. We gotta get a little bit better first, right? Let's save right here. Ooh, it's draft mode. What is this? Draft mode lets you can start a new game with self-constructed starter deck. You need to open ten chests to construct your starter deck. You may choose one of the three cards and add it to your battle deck. After you complete your deck, you can start the campaign. That's cool. I'm gonna do standard mode. Upside down! <laughs> what did I need? 
just a few scoundrels who were sufficiently delusioned with life and totally lacked any instinct of self-preservation. The world, the world I will change is so full of rumors. I had no difficulty in finding the crooks I sought. Outcasts, greedy fools who killed for fun and stole for pleasure. First of all, I blinded their sense of reasoning with lust for the royal treasury. And then I made each of them long for only one thing. To find the box, which would make all their dreams come true. Make them rich and great. <laughs> what naive fools they were. Good voice acting. They led me to the box. And its power, its wild power, made the task even easier. Now they believe that they hungered for it for themselves. I put the idea into their heads that they were getting in each other's way. Vying with one another. I let them get into a fight while I, while I, oh yes, while I took the box and smashed it up, broke it into pieces, releasing this incredible power. I felt it washing over me, changing me, and filling every cell in my body. <laughs> my plan was perfect, as they tried to rip each other to shreds. The power I obtained. There was now a power flowing through me with which I could finally have my revenge on everyone who had spat on me and thought that they could do it without being punished. But I could not imagine that this power might be even greater. The Ashmaster sought me out and told me that there was far, far more. The box contained a mere fraction of this power, only a small part of it. But. I kill Lady Death, or rather, the wretched part of her that remains, then I will obtain all of it. I just need to get to her. I just need to get to them. That is the introduction to Magnus. And this is the beginning of the campaign. So, you know, one of the things about this game is that it is a campaign, a little bit more story driven. And we love great, great voice acting. I loved it. All right, let's delve into the game. We're in the Forbidden, forbidden Grove. So the final boss for this land is going to be the, what did he call it? The Ancestor? Basically, we have like this right here as a timeline to prepare for this final boss. So in the meantime, we're going to be fighting things, finding things. Now, this right here is a campsite. And here at the campsite, we can go ahead and see Herbalist. We can see the Ashmaster, the Merchant, and the Blacksmith. But you just look at the bottom. I actually don't have any resources at the moment. So I can't do much here. You know, I could try to burn some of the cards that I already have. But first and foremost, I want to take a look at my deck. Because this is a brand new class for me. So I see what this is all about. This is an upgraded Flash of Pain. So a deal 4 damage series. The attack's effect increases by 1 with each use. Eruption do 15 damage. Now eruption, it says every fourth played eruption card produces a special effect detailed in the description. So it's kind of like a combo thing. I don't know if it lasts between turns or not, but that'd be kind of interesting. What's nice about this is that the more I play this, the more damage it does. I only have one of them, by the way. I, I said I had two, I only have one. On the left is a mana cost. Um, all right, so this one just has a little bit extra eruption damage. And then we have healing bomb, apply regeneration yourself. At the end of the character's turn, regeneration restores his four health points to them. This effect lasts for five turns. That's a decent amount of health. So I like the fact that I have sustain in the deck. That's wonderful. We have heart subjugation. Apply beatings on an opponent for one turn. The monster will inflict a strike on an ally or itself, dealing 15 to 40 damage and reducing the target's max health by 5 to 15, depending on the target's rank. And an opponent inflicted with obedience uses a special skill instead of their usual skills. The power of the newly acquired skill depends on the monster's rank. After the effect, 
and the mental blocks applied on the opponent, preventing obedience from being applied on them again for one turn. Interesting. So basically, you can override whatever the opponent's going to do and make it attack itself or an ally. That's great. Expensive cards. Refined Torture. All right, Phoenix. Phoenix's ability says that when this card is played, is returned back to the battle deck. Now, if you guys have the tutorial, or you, since I didn't really show that part of it, there's two important things in this game. There's an Ash deck and a battle deck, and we're going to go over that now in this next battle. But keep in mind what Phoenix is. is basically is going to be something I can play over and over again with never have to renew it. It does seven damage, and then every fourth card... Every fourth played eruption card produces special effects. If I happen to use this as the fourth eruption card, I get 30 health points, so even more sustain, which is beautiful. And then we have Summon Doppelganger. Summon the Phantom. Fan uh, Magnus's Phantom Doppelganger and the player's ally. Most monster attacks have no effect on it. It can perform various actions and attacks against monsters at the cost of losing 25 health points each turn. And now the sustain is suddenly makes sense. I'm wondering, wow, we have a lot of sustain. We have a healing bomb. We have this eruption that gives us up to 30. And it comes here, Phantom. It's a very powerful thing, but it cost me health to have it out. So it's going to be an interesting way to play around this and try to figure this out. You cannot summon a new Phantom while another one is alive. All right, let's go. And again, I can't really do anything here. Anything worthwhile, that is, because I have no uh, ingredients or well, I don't have anything. I don't have any money. I could technically craft a recipe. I, I, I could craft something. So... These cost 20, and I could craft one of them. So let's take a look. We can summon it. We can craft another doppelganger. I don't know how useful that really is. The scales of Avarice. Choose an effect. Spend one mana point, deal three damage. Or two, spend the rest of your mana, deal three damage for each mana point spent. Interesting card. Counter Strike. Choose an opponent. If they are attacked by a monster, they will deal 10 to 20 damage to a random monster, depending on the opponent's rank. So you use this in conjunction with the obedience, which or heart subjugation to be to be exact. So you use an opponent, and if that opponent gets attacked by a monster, which is I'm assuming an enemy that is confused or obedient, then it also does 20 damage to a random monster depending on the rank. Uh, this is a very sort of complicated in a way, because uh, I have to choose the opponent and then hope that the obedience. Or the confused monster hits the other monster. Um, I'm a little, I'm not sure here. It's because average seems like it's decent. Let's go ahead and craft this. And we'll, we'll deal Counter Strike a little bit later. Oh, I also could have upgraded. I could have upgraded my. Uh, this might have been a better choice actually. If I wasn't 100% sure what I wanted, I could have done this. So later on, I can buy traits when I have gold. Let's keep this in mind. These are going to be very interesting, powerful, like almost like relics, so to speak. Powerful effects. For instance, just can hover over one. This is going to be at the end of each round, apply two curses on a random cursed opponent. You know, this is going to be the Phantom now has more health points and it does more damage. So that looks like something I might want to buy. As far as upgrades are concerned, we could have upgraded a couple of things like. Making this AoE. I would, I would, might have been useful to have an AoE eruption. This, this does uh, increases the scaling by more with the series. This makes eruption do more. We have that already. This was applies poison. So we have a poison effect. And we also have the ability to do damage twice. So this goes well with strength. There is strength in this game. All right, let's go ahead, guys. We spent a lot of time in that camp. But it is, it's, the camp is an important part of the game. That's where you do the upgrades. That's where you do the crafting, find traits, renewing cards. There's, I didn't show you the blacksmith. So the blacksmith is... Well, that was the blacksmith. I didn't show you the merchant. The merchant, I also can, so I also could buy something right now since I have 20 gold. And since I am here, we can take a look and see if we want any of this stuff. Uh, I would rather get into the game and maybe see as how my deck functions and see what I can do. But there's definitely, this might be in interesting as well. This is life steal. So whatever damage this does, I, I restore that health. And considering that my phantom is going to be costing me a lot of life, maybe even more sustain might be useful. This is an amulet of heartbeat, so for every amount of card in our deck, I restore that much health. So more sustain. This is a draw card. It's draw, but it also has the thing we call return. So that means I have to discard or put three cards to the bottom of my deck, but then draw three cards. There are some interesting little consumables that I have here that I can't afford. 
Uh, I could sell some recipes, but I don't necessarily want to. I could, in the future, trade stuff if I need, if I want to trade. And, uh, you know, all kinds of upgrades here at the merchant. At the time being, I don't really want to buy any recipes, but... All right. So here's a, a map. These maps are, like, procedurally generated. All right. And you notice they're sort of like rings, right? So on the outer level, there's a little bit harder stuff with a little bit more rare stuff. So we have, like, a... a maybe, like, a higher level tile over here we have a rare chest over here in the immediate vicinity we have these undefined event tiles which could be good or bad we have a battle here which helps you uh, gain tangible resources and uh, get things like ash and gold and we can also go to a chest but we don't really have a key right now so since we don't have a key i'm going to go ahead and try to fight a battle to find a key and then hopefully open this chest and matter of fact since i see two of these rare chests which, which required oh look this little buddy wants to come inside Buddy. Since I see two of these rare chests that require two keys, I'd much rather save up for two keys. So let's go fight this battle. Let's put our deck to the test, with Mr. Magnus. It's a cute kitty. All right, so there's a level one Satyr and a level one Rat. All right, so. A cute little thing that they do is like when they're showing the intentions of what these enemies are going to do, they put it in card form. So you hover over here. This is going to do six to eight damage, and this is going to do five damage. It's a lot of damage coming at me, right? So let's try this. Use this phantom. So it costs twenty-five a turn to uh, to have him out here, but he does eighteen damage to a random opponent, which is quite powerful. And I believe he also takes a damage for me, if I read that correctly. And since I am going to be taking some damage to have him in play, I think I want to put the regeneration bomb on myself. Because I'm not even full life, so this is beneficial. And I can't play anything else, so I'm going to go ahead and end turn. And when you end turn, you can put cards back to the bottom of your deck. So since I can't play any of these cards, I'm going to put these to the bottom of my deck. I want to draw into the other cards in my deck. And now you're going to notice something. I want to show you right now. It's a very important part of the deck. And I actually lied. I actually lied. I um, I miss I misunderstood this, and it's good that I misunderstood it and, and learning it now. So we, so maybe you guys might have had the same issue. Maybe you guys got it right away. So the Phantom loses twenty five HP a turn, and the monsters don't affect the Phantom, but the Phantom does damage. So the Phantom is doing nice damage, great stuff, and it only lasts for a certain amount of time because it loses its health every turn. Now I don't know if I can actually put healing stuff on it. That would be interesting. But my jester is still taking the brunt of the damage. So it's still good that I have regeneration. So when you use a card, guys, it goes down here to the Ash deck. Which is basically, if you play to the Spire, it's like the Exhaust deck. And what's unique about this game is that after every battle, you get these rest points. And you have to make the decision to renew cards. So that you can play them again in a future battle. Basically, bring them back from the Ash deck into the battle deck. And then there's things like I told you before, which is Phoenix. is This circumvents that whole process it just gets right back to your battle deck so phoenix is a quite a powerful effect and um what do i keep track of the eruption because i know i know we have eruption cards am i even in eruption at the moment let's read this this says in this form archetype curse cards cost one mana point less to play the amount of health you restore is halved so i'm currently in just a form and healing is less effective at the end of every three rounds your form changes to one of the two random forms so I did not realize that. We do have forms in this class as well. So my healing is a little bit less good. It's important to know that. Learning moments. So this is 18 to a random opponent. So what I want to do is I want to try doing subjugation on this guy. So he's either going to attack himself or attack the rat. Nice. Let's go ahead and do... Uh, Flash of pain over here. I'll keep this hand. So, your max hand sign is 10 cards. But for every turn, you draw up to your uh, 6 cards. So, I'm going to draw 2 extra cards. To get to a hand size of 6. Unless I decide to put a card to the bottom of my discard, uh, my battle deck. But I'm going to just keep all these cards in my hand. I'm going to draw up to 6. And there's ways to get up to 10, which is the max hand size. But in order to do that... Beautiful. So that... This guy was subjugated, or or I guess he was under the effect of obedience, and then he attacked the rat. And now I can just kill him. 
But before I do that, I want to try to get some healing, right? Another quick little important thing is that when you run out of cards in your battle deck, because every time you use a card, it goes down to the bottom and goes to your ash deck, you have an ash pet, which costs 15 HP to use, but it renews five random cards. So this is also why a sustain is also quite nice. So instead of using rest points to renew cards, you can use your HP to renew cards and instead use rest points to heal yourself at the end of battle. So I'll show you what I mean by that. So we're going to renew all these cards. And we're going to go ahead and kill this man right now. With some refined torture. And right here you can see the eruption. So two more cards and I have the eruption effect. I don't know if that cares about between battles. It would be interesting to know. Probably doesn't. But we got a key, which is beautiful. I want one more key and we get that rare chest. So here's the, the end of battle screen. We get these rest points. And you, you can allocate them as you wish. Um, so because I used the strain pact, I was able to renew cards for my health. And now the only card that I've used that is in my ash deck right now is this one. So I can spend a rest point on that and then spend the rest on healing myself. And it's kind of efficient that way. But you could also come over here and craft and use a rest point to craft at the end of battle. But things that requires ash. And ash is something you win from defeating battles. I currently only have five. Um, so I can't quite construct. But that's important to know. I'm going to go ahead and renew this and heal the rest. I guess I could just do this and then just a full heal and boom, we're done. We have one rest point left over. So not bad. Here we can extract some resources. We got a little herb, which is important for the herbalist. All right, so we can go and try to do the common chest. But like I said, I'm a man that wants the rare chest. So I'm going to go for another battle to get another key. I'm going to make my way over to the rare chest. Let's go to this event. You try very hard to quit stealing, but the old habit prevails at times. Try to rob a traveler whose silhouette flashed in the distance. You definitely need that stuff more than he does. You got a mana potion. So this is a little area for our consumables. This mana potion is a one-time thing. It could restore two mana points. Not bad. Let's extract some resources. Another herb. Okay, herbalist is going to be getting a visit from me very soon. Do another battle. And hopefully get a key. We're going against a level one stitched. And a level one skeleton on top. You can see little effects that these things have, these monsters. So this one has putrefi putrefaction. Am I saying that right? Putrefaction? At the end of his turn, it does two damage to all characters. And that includes the skeleton, I'm pretty sure. Um, considering that they also just took two damage. Or mess I'm crazy. This is Wrath of the Dead. So when any character restores health points, it increases his strength by one. So if I use sustain on myself, which I probably want to do... It's going to gain one strength. So we should probably want to kill that guy first. But then this guy's also doing two damage AoE. So it's like, eh. Undead armor. Undead army. So when this thing dies, it summons a lower skeleton with five health points. And this is tending to do six to five to six damage. This is tending to do ten damage to all characters except the undead. So basically me. <laughs> now I'm in a different gesture form, right? No, I'm in the gesture form. But it says all undead restore two health points every turn. Am I considered undead? So does this stitch not attack me? No, I'm a human. Okay. Forget what I said. Let's put the phantom out there. Boom. Let's go. Alright, let's go ahead and... So the eruption did not carry over. That's important to use. Let's go use this upgraded flash of pain. It's also ability to do six damage. But let's do the upgraded flash of pain. Because if I do this, okay, if I do this six, if I do this, I can do three damage as well. But the thing is, by healing myself, this guy's going to get stronger. So I'm going to just hold off on that for now. Beautiful. And let's go ahead and end turn. I'm going to go ahead and um, put this at the bottom of my deck so I can draw new cards. All right, the phantom attack, this guy's in the back. Oh, and the stitch... Still did 10 damage to my doppelganger. So normally it says most monster attacks have no effect on it. But in this situation, this was able to damage my phantom. That's an interesting interaction. Since the skeleton is probably going to die here. I say probably. I say 100% sure he's going to die. Now I'm going to go ahead and apply regeneration on myself. Get some healing. 
which unfortunately is at least still had by gesture form. Forgot to mention, <laughs> I guess I knew this. He summons a lesser skeleton, which also gets strength from regeneration. So unfortunately, I got a little bit punished. I'm taking some damage, but this is the beautiful thing about these games. It's getting punished and learning. Let's put subjugation on Mr. Stitch. And let's go ahead and kill that skeleton. And in turn, let's put this in the bottom. Let's try to find the better one. Boom, he attacked himself and the game is over. All right, by game I mean battle. Wow, 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 wow. So I could restore all these cards at the camp. There is a one-time renew at the camp. You click it for zero gold, renew all cards. And by doing that, I can then allocate my rest points to my health and heal up. Which I may want to do. Do I plan to go in the camp anytime soon? Because if you go to the camp, then you're wasting time on the timeline and then you're not going further out. I mean, I'm going to need to restore cards because I need to fight more battles, right? There might be some battles on the way over to the chest. So, a little bit tricky, but I think what I want to do is bring this back, bring this back, bring this back. And I'm going to go ahead and heal the rest. Probably a fair series of events. We have to go to two more squares before we get to that chest. Now, there are some times where... Something's going to pop up and it's going to run out of time or I have a limited amount of time to f go get there. So that's important to know as well. I got a relic, which is imported from the Ash Master. And all that will make sense in a second. Um, this is a random tile that would be nice. It could be a random event, a monster battle, or just unoccupied. And there is resources there as well. But like I said, we want to go to that rare chest. So let's go ahead and get there. In the distance, you can see a bright light flash. The air is crackling with magic. Take a closer look. Effects gain movement using portals or travel stones and it's unavailable for 10 turns. So teleporters lit up with a similar gleam when you use them. From the looks of things, that won't happen anytime soon. You should not have trespassed my land. That will crush you. Let's go ahead and extract resources. Don't forget to extract. We got some three herbs now, which is going to be quite nice. We might find even more herbs over here. Your travel stone plays up on occasion. You remember that the blacksmith warned you of how unreliable it was. You have ended up in a different place unfortunate now there's no way that's gonna happen twice right here's the downside of what just happened now i go onto these undepleted depleted tiles and i'm wasting time going back to deplete tiles would do nothing so now i'm kind of like well i guess i could go to these events and then double my way back up over to this chest but then i'm not at the chest whatever let's just explore Let's go to these events. You find some lockpicks lying on the ground next to the chest. It looks like a thief will be deprived of some loot. You feel like you've definitely used some lockpicks before. Let's use a lockpick. You hurt your hand lockpicking, and perhaps you'll get lucky next time. The next chest in the next 10 hours will require one more key to open. Oh my goodness. That's very unfortunate. Wow. How long do hours take? Well... We're keeping, we're keeping keep an eye on that right there. Whoa. We got a goblet. All right, so one hour per movement. Well, that's unfortunate. Ambush. This is a big boot. Big dude. Nightwick's card effects activate twice. Ooh, he's got echo form. I'm jealous. All right. Applies bleed. A bleed is at the start of a character's turn. Bleed deals one damage to them, and the effect lasts for three turns. If a character is damaged by a strike card, the bleed damage is increased by one. Any healing effect resets the damage to one per turn. Luckily, I have some good healing in the deck, but you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go ahead and put my little f uh, phantom. Oh, I can only do one. I could either subjugate him and make him attack himself. And since he does seem like a little bit higher level, maybe this does more damage. But regardless, I'm going to put this on him so I don't take any things to my face. And we'll summon the phantom next turn because we get to hold our hands. Let's go ahead and end turn. Let's go ahead and get scar these two or recycle you put them in the bottom. Oh, he attacked himself for 25. Beautiful. I can't do that again for another turn, but the damage is already done because now I got Mr. Phantom coming in to do some big old damage to him. 
And I'm going to use this one later. So this is my, my better upgraded Flash of Pain. So I want to hit it with the Eruption as opposed to these. So let's go ahead and do that. And this might hurt me, guys. Because he's about to do... Double Bleed. Oof. I'm taking two damage a turn now. But he should be dead this turn, I believe, right? Because we're about to do Eruption. So we do Boom Boom and he's dead. He's about to do increase all speed, but it doesn't matter because at this point I erupt him. Boom! Beautiful. Actually, if I was a smart man, if I was a smart man, I would have just ended turn and my phantom would have killed them. And I don't have to waste a card into my ash. So now I don't get to. But luckily, I mean, I didn't take that much damage, so. I could actually just go ahead and renew everything. As we extract these resources, we got another herb. So when we go back to the camp, the herbalist is going to be giving me something good. On Rocky by Tau, we got another herb. Okay, so now this became from a depleted Tau into an undefined Tau. So now it's not as bad. I get an event on the way back. On your path, you suddenly meet the blacksmith who clearly always keeps his stock replenished with opportune time to dismantle some cards. You know what? Sure thing. So dismantling costs gold, and you know what? I am absolutely broke. So this, can I do upgrades while he's here? Nope. They mean what they say. I, he's only here to dismantle and dismantle only. AKA removal. Well, I didn't know it cost 60 gold. Ashmaster. Ashstrom has created anomalies. Quickly, draw on their power before they disappear. So this is what I was talking about. Now this is something that they get summoned around the map and they don't, only last for a couple of turns. So this lasts for three turns, which means three movement spaces. So I can go here, 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 here. No, here, 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 and get activate poison, deal 7 damage to an opponent, activate every poison effect applied on them. We can go over here, Tome of Wrath, choose an effect, deal 6 damage, or apply burn and poison on the selected opponent. Okay. Or we can get some ash from the ash chalice, or counter strike. I want to go for the Tome of Wrath, but I do get... So the key is still... Alright, so we're going to have to double back onto a square that we've already been onto. So we're doing a lot of double back. This is not that efficient. But it is what it is. Also, shout out to Deck of Ashes for sponsoring this video. I'm really enjoying this new character. Alright, let's go ahead and do this. Let's get this home of Wrath. It's a recipe. Yeah, I actually don't have the card. And I'm doubling back again onto all of these squares. Not very efficient. It's unfortunate. All right, we got the rulers looking for me. Where are you? I will leave no stone unturned, but I will find you. Let's go to extract. So we got some more herbs, and now we can finally open the chest. The chest is open. We get 20 gold, and we can choose a recipe. Remedial potion. To report, restore eight health points, destroy one random ailment. And ailments are things that get uh, applied to you in turn battles. And normally you'd have to go to a herbalist to remove them. Increase the Phantom's crit chance by 40%. So the crit and dodge is a thing in this game. This is just a boon that increases my Phantom by 40%. That sounds fantastic. Or this Ice Treachery, which is an Ice Shield. The characters with an Ice Shield takes 50% of the damage from the next strike attack. The character attacker will also have their speed reduced by 1. So it slows the attacker and also I take 50% less damage. I want to get the Critical Deception. And make my phantom a crit man. We also got a speed potion, which increases my speed by two. Let's go and extract some resources. And we got some more herbs. Wow. And a new day has begun. So that was one whole day. Timeline is increasing. And now the camp gets are restored. And normally they restore every 24 hours. Let's go ahead and... Do a rare battle. Am I ready for a medium battle? Where do I get to see? Is this boon already applied? So how do I see? I'm curious. I got this boon. Is the boon just naturally on me? Or should I? Because I could use a stone here. And go back to camp immediately. And use some of my resources, like the herbalist, right? 
I kind of want to maybe do the camp first. I don't know. This I might just get my booty kicked against this medium battle. I don't know how strong or weak I really am. If I use this portal, I can go ahead and go over here. And another medium battle is waiting me. If I go ahead and do the camp stone, then I can make my way up top here for another place with keys. But I don't have enough keys for two rare chests. And the way that I get keys is by fighting this battle. So let's fight this battle. I think we have a decent amount of health. We should be fine. This is a level one werebore. Okay, should be all right. He does 12 to 14 damage. Okay, we got heart subjugation. I want that damage to be applied to your face and not mine. And let's do a flash of pain. Simple enough. I want to draw into my phantom. So let's discard everything. 30 damage to his face. Whoa, that's very really strong. Let's play our phantom. And let's save the nice flash of pain for the big old finish. Two more cards. So next turn we get lethal. Next turn we have lethal. All right, I took 14 damage, but... All right, I could actually just... Do this. I can restore my whole deck. And if I end turn, he's dead. Alright. Oh, it happened at the beginning. Oh, that's awkward. Okay. He goes first. That's important. It's a learning lesson. But my whole point of that was just now I can use all my hit points to restore full health. So it's really, really efficient to use... Uh, Ash Packs, which restores five random cards at the cost of health. And then you can just restore all your hit points with the rest points. So that's, that's that's what I intended to do. We have a lot of herbs. Boy, oh boy, I need to go to that camp, huh? Let's do one more event here. Did we get a key? We don't have a key, no. We got some ore for the blacksmith, and we also got a relic. Let's go do another battle, maybe hopefully get a key. Something fishy about him. Okay, so we're going against a level one Hydra. All right, this when this dies, it drops two fish eggs. Now this fish egg is a has a shield, so it takes no damage from the next strike card. Will be ignored. Okay, decrease the time required for evolution by one turn, and it takes three turns to reborn into a chamber f Hydra or fish folk. But after it goes, it's gonna make that go faster. And when this thing dies, it's gonna. Summon two of those. And it also does five, six damage. Okay, so here's the little dilemma. I want to kill that fish egg before it tries to come back. So I have to hit it twice because one of them has a shield. So what I'm going to do is the phantom. And then I'm going to go ahead and attack the fish egg. And I'm hoping the phantom hits the fish egg. That's the hope. It worked. All right, so now I don't got to worry about that guy coming back to life. Okay, so... Now I just have to 1v1 this guy, and luckily I can make him two damage to himself, and I can hit him with some flash of pain. And this is very good because now I don't got to worry about the things coming back to life. When he drops his eggs, it's a little bit easier to manage. So remember what we said about restoring, it's always worth it. Absolutely. Let's go ahead and do that. And we can even just kill him right now with this, but that's a little bit overkill, is it not? Now the two eggs are here. So what I could do is actually use this to stock one of the shields. Beautiful. For one man, I could do that. It's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I want to maybe try to use restore again so I can get my cards back. All right, let's kill one of the eggs. I forgot to mention I'm in wrath form. Whoa, I transformed. Look at me now. Holy. Okay. In this form, Archetype Phantom costs one mana point less to play. You lose 10 health points each time a Phantom dies. At the end of every three rounds, you transform into Jester form. All right, so I can play this for two now. One of the following effects appears every five turns. A Sea Wave brings a Fish Egg. A Sea Wave restores three health points to all Sea Monsters. And a Sea Wave brings Sea Monster to the battlefield. Interesting. Well, I guess I bring my Phantom back. Sure. Um, Sure. Let's do that. The Phantom's gonna kill one of them. The 
Phantom will kill one of them. And we win. Beautiful. So now we can do the Heart Pact again. The Ash Pact, right? So if I use this... Do I not draw into Ash Pact? I didn't. Oh, I can only use it once per battle. That's right. I can only use it once per battle. Okay. So we have a little bit of dilemma. We have to renew. Or we also can rest up. What I do know... Is that when I go to the camp, I can rest up. Or renew all cards for free. But I can also do that right before I fight the final bottle. So I think what I'm going to do is this. Bring some of these back anyways. And then... Restore like that. And that's decent. That's a decent compromise, right? Alright, the Ash Master has created... The Ash has created anomalies. Quickly draw on the power before they disappear. Alright, so we have... Activate Curse. Dispel Curses from a selected opponent and deal 7 damage for each Curse Dispel. The Curse is a passive effect that reduces the opponent's strength by 1 speed and crit chance dodger by 5%. Okay, I don't know I can even use this. This is choose a card from your hand, draw all copies of this card. That's certainly better than this card, or this just gives me Ash. Uh, I think I just want the Ash, so what I'm going to do is... Actually, I, since I distracted resources, I can't even hit, hit these things in time. Because I'm pretty sure if I go here and here, it's going to be gone. So, we might, let's test our theory. Well, most certainly not going to happen because now I'm going to extract these resources and goodbye anomalies. I didn't get to use you, but I wasn't too excited for them anyways. We have a lot of resources we can use at the camp. And hopefully this time we get a key because I want to open some more chests. The level one three face. We're in gesture form. My mana is reduced by two. Oh. Do us four damage for each mana point that the player spent during that last turn. Well, I use all three. He wants to do 12, but you know what? It's going straight to his face and not mine. I want to return all this because I want to just draw into Phantom. And oh, there's my Phantom. Unfortunately, he's going to be doing. Face of death, dispels stealth from all characters. And deals 8 damage. Alright, no worries. I don't even think I have any stuff on me. I just certainly don't. Player gains 1 mana point less every 4th turn. I have 5 mana now, so... I could do 15 damage. Plus this, he's, oh, he's dead. Boom. Beautiful. So, we didn't lose too much life, so let's go ahead and renew a lot of these cards. The most important ones. These are pretty good. I like this Avarice. It's pretty nice. i bring one of these back. Bring one of my health points back. We're at full health. This is beautiful. Let's go ahead and extract. We got a key so we can open up this chest, but the best case scenario for me is to go open that next rare chest. Let's go this way. Nice. Got an ambush. Going against a level 1 wolf and a level 1 boar. This does some damage. Okay, so first and foremost, let's play our... Ooh, phantom first or subjugation first? I think do phantom first. And let's go ahead and... Uh, you know what? Cancel that. I'm actually going to just do this. Skills of Avarice is much better when you can use more mana on it. Top, you can see the speed. So I'm very slow compared to these dudes. Okay, I'm a seven. I'm six or seven. Then my phantom is much faster. Is what I meant to say. So this this guy's dead, and I can go subjugate this man. So he's gonna try to stun me, but you know what? No sir. No stun on me. And we should go to kill him right now. So let's go ahead and use. Our ash pact and let's kill him boom gorgeous we got a key as well gorgeous 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 let's go renew this and restore all our life brand new baby all right so now my goal is to go up to that chest but we see there's a portal there right so we're gonna go to the portal And go here 
Beauty, bada bing, bada boom. The ruler's looking for me. It's approaching. We're almost there, boys. All right, what do we get? So we can do critical deception, ice treachery, and well, I guess for the same options. Now, here's the thing, though. So this is a boon. And I already had this recipe. Can I use it more than once? I don't think so. So the next logical thing for me is to get the potion or to get the treachery. Well, the potions are pretty good. Restore health points. And you destroy elements, which is probably going to be useful later on. But what I'm going to do is the ice shield. We also got a consumable. From the start of your next turn, all fish eggs cannot use shield. The effect lasts until the end of battle. Nice. And we got a lot of herbs. Let's go check out the camp now. I think we're getting ready to, have, to finish this up. The herbs in the ground are incredibly similar to those you usually get from the herbalist. Would they make your life easier? We're a risk taker. Let's do it. Now there's so much energy that there's absolutely no time for rest. Rest points and tents are reduced by two for three battles. Oh, well, well, well. On your path, you suddenly meet the Ash Master. He offers to reform the rite of incineration, for it was by virtue of fate itself that you dis your paths have crossed. Let's do it. So by burning this, I can put cards into my deck of ashes. Not very useful, I'll tell you what. Because I don't have anything that actually wants to be my deck of ashes. There are cards that would want to be deck of ashes. They have passive effects. That wasn't one of them. So let's go ahead and fight this. Hopefully get a key. Open the chest. Go to the camp. And I think we're ready to go. This guy's going to do some damage. But this is fine. My phantom can get played here. Smack him up with this. Let's hold on to these two cards. I like these cards a lot. Hopefully draw into... Heart Subjugation. It's a very nice card. There it is. Next turn, he's going to be attacking himself. And we have Lethal. Phantom kills him, right? So I go ahead and just pass, pass, pass. Beautiful. Phantom is very powerful. Love it, love it, love it. We didn't get a key. We unfortunately did not get a key. Damn. So there's some anomalies afoot. We have sustainment of lies. Restore 25% health. 25. Oh, that's good. That's really nice. Oh, the phantom is powerful and I get to restore health to it. Do I dare go back up that way? This is some ash. Apply bleed and draw a strike. Huh. Dispel shields from all characters. Renew two, renew two random cards for each spell to spell. That's like a nice situational card. Definitely this is the best card I can get, which is the Statement of Lies. So I'm going to go ahead and get it. And, okay. Let's go back to a path that we haven't seen yet. Because we're kind of currently taking a path that we've already kind of come across. I think we're about to be ready for the fight this final boss, so... During your journey, you stumble upon a small altar. You've heard of it before. If you offer resources to the deity, then good luck will shine upon you in battle. Do you wish to try this out? Make an offering. Nothing's ever too good for ancient deities. The level of all demon monsters reduced by two for the next eight hours. We, we, we lost two goblets in one ore. Was it worth it? I don't think so. But we did it for the sake of seeing what the hell it was all about. Let's go check out the herbalist. We have a lot of a lot of coins, a lot of stuff. All right. So we can use our herbs to get some upgrades. Let's take a look. So first, you can heal us if we wanted it, but we don't need that. We can cure ailments if we had it, but we don't have that. There are stat items now. In order to get these stat items, I would need. So why can't I? I need an upgrade. Ah, okay. So now this is where we're going. So we can go ahead and get. Allows you to cure all ailments except for parasites. Okay. Restores three health points after each battle. That's very good sustain. Or stutter stats. Allows you to purchase stat increasing items. And then you can even further improve that to get allows you to purchase items that boost strength or speed. So stat, stat increases items would be the men, men Dragora root. And I can also buy the speed thing. 
decrease my speed by one as well if I get the second upgrade, which is useful. That means I can go faster during fight and I can keep buying this throughout the run. We can get up to what? Three more speed maybe? I don't know. That's an estimate. That can make a difference. And crit chance 2% seems small, but it also also adds up. So that's interesting. But I think the strongest thing is... I think wound healing is very powerful. But I feel like if I'm going to go... If I'm going to go into like a tree, I want to like go further into it, right? So do I care about reducing the cost of healing items by 20% or would I rather have the ability to boost speed? I'd rather have the ability to boost speed. So I'm going to upgrade this, upgrade that. Mainly because I want to increase my speed. And dodge as well. And strength. Strength is also a possibility. I kind of just spent my money <laughs> without first looking at what else I could do here. I was just too caught up in the fact that I'm full of herbs. Let's go check out the merchant. So he has some recipes for us to buy. Draw a rare card, draw an epic card. I don't think I even have any of those. There's some things like strength potions that I could use for the battle coming up. I think we'll be fine, but you never know. We can sell some stuff that we don't really care about. Speaking of which, we want to craft these. So let's go ahead and craft these. Increase the amount of rest points in the tent. Allows you to buy two rare rugby each day from the merchant. Makes the exchange rate twice as lucrative. These are very good. These are very good. I need more goblets. Let's take a look at the back blacksmith. So let's go ahead and craft. You can only craft one because this is kind of expensive. So this is 40 ashen. 40 ashen. These are 20. So I can only craft one. And I like critical deception. So let's go ahead and craft that. But I think there's a way to dismantle cards. I could technically dismantle cards. But I need to unlock first. In order to get that, I need to do four ore. And I don't have that. And if I can do trade, I can maybe trade these relics for ore. Let's go take a look at what the relics could do for us at the Ash Master. So we can use these relics to get upgrades here. Allows you to meditate in the tent for three rest points to get a common or rare recipe. That's not bad. You upgrade resurrection rights so that you're always re resurrected at full health points. Increases the amount of ash obtained from ash challenges by 50%. Two ash challenges may be created in an ash storm. Okay, that's really good. So if I get Voice of the Storm, whenever that uh, uh, ash storm happens, I can go get some ash. And ash is pretty useful because I get to craft new cards from my deck. As you notice, I'm kind of low on ash right now. And at the moment, I don't really have the... Um... So what I could try to do is trade two ore for one relic. And yes, it's a little bit inefficient in the sense that like I'm losing two resources for one, but I get to upgrade... Voice of the Storm, and then maybe strike any more ash. So I guess let's take advantage of that. Let's do trade ore for relic. Just so we, we, we use our resources. It's better than not using anything at all. So one thing to notice is that this is not going to be good for the foreseeable future or the next fight. This is like future value because this is making my ash storm stronger, but that's not going to help me in the battle, at least not in this current battle. But I think that's fine because I think I'm strong enough. Um, we can renew our cards for zero. We can only do that once until the thing gets restored. And let's go ahead and see if there's anything we want to buy. I would like to buy more of these. I don't, have, I don't have a lot of money. I could upgrade cards. All right, so let's say I want to upgrade my Ash Pact. Renews 8 cards. Nice. What about the regeneration? I draw 3 cards and also play with regeneration. Is drawing 3 cards useful? If I had cheap cards, I feel like it would be better, right? This seems nice because this renews a card as well as uh, replies to regeneration. What else can I do? I could also upgrade this to my regular cards like Flash of Pain. Can I upgrade the cards that... Ah, never mind. I can't really upgrade the cards that I... Just crafted. I wonder if that's random or is just. I'm wondering why that's why that is. Um. I can give this Phoenix. Oh, this already has Phoenix. I can make it the eruption give me shield or give me the eruption give me 40 health points. Let's go ahead and do. Uh, maybe some AOE. I don't know how useful the AOE is going to be, but I can imagine it might be useful to have AOE on one of these flash of paints. 
And we're all set, guys. I must Let's see if there's anything I can do with this money. I could buy some of these things. Some of these cards. I can buy these. I also can buy some of these. For the next from the start of your next turn, Infestor's gonna add ailments. Okay, I can buy a strength potion. Let's buy a strength potion. Might be useful. Let's go ahead and leave. Let's try to get into a battle, hopefully, and get this key, and then let's go clear that dungeon. We haven't even cleared the dungeon, so let's go clear that dungeon. Okay, hopefully get a key, we get the chest, go to the dungeon, and then we're ready to fight. So she's trying to discard the top card of my player's deck. Okay. It's important to mention that discard makes it go to the ash deck. When any card is discarded, the second best applies burn on the player. Ooh. This guy's increased crit, and he also summons an Ip. Succubus or Satyr when he dies. He's also going to increase his own strength. So let's kill that human first. They're, they're both kind of like important targets, I would say. I want to draw into my... Uh, I want to draw into my phantom, so let's go ahead and put these in the bottom. So he, he ended up hitting the succubus, which is nice. She made me discard a card, and I discarded heart sub... She made me to heart discard doppelganger. Oof, that's rough. So that's also a good reason to maybe have two of those in my deck. So now she discarded that, but... Did I not get the upgrade that restore a random card? I didn't. If I had the upgrade, this would have been useful. Well, in that case... Let's just kill her so she stops doing that. Let's put regeneration on myself. And we'll get ready to kill this guy with our eruption. Let's go ahead and bring back these cards. And GG. But, remember... He's you're summoning a succubus now. Alright. This fight would have been a little bit easier if I had my phantom. Ooh, this is a new form. I'm in fear form. In this form, archetype obedience costs one mana point less to play. You draw one less card at the start of the round. Very nice. Very nice. Let's get this girl out of the face. Bye, bye, bye. We didn't get a key. Unfortunate. Let's go ahead and uh, do this. Alright, I think we're about to fight this man. Let's go to the dungeon and then just... A peculiar atmosphere permeates this place. You feel strength surging through your body, but surely it can't be all that simple, can it? Listen to your intuition. There must have been a source of power here a very long time ago. You return one card more in the next three battles the level of all human monsters increased by two for the next eight hours let's go ahead and dig astro has increased oh so this is actually a good way to get my ash now because remember we just increased our ash chalice now i can get counter strike or i can get a lot of the ash which i want because it's 15 ash the problem is I was trying to do this dungeon. Now I'm curious, if I do the dungeon, will I lose these chalice? Most likely, yeah? One way to find out. Let's do the dungeon. When this takes damage or restores health, it does damage to the player. This does 3 damage to all characters. Okay, let's go ahead and increase the crit of my guy. And just to use my mana, let's put the mana of that guy. And we're going to take a little bit of damage, but that's fine. Oh, nice. Alright, let's subjugate him and it's game over. Okay, 
Okay, I would like to heal myself. So what I'm gonna do is this. Restore everything. My fan is about to kill him, yeah? And now I can just spend all my rush points healing. Gorgeous. And we got a key. Gorgeous. Let's just... Okay, let's restore that. Do that. Full health. No problem. An altar. Very nice. Okay, there's a chest here. Let's go ahead and do it. Got 10 gold, and we have the ability to summon another phantom, another heart subjugation. I'll do another subjugation. I like this. Is a very good card. And we got another red hook. It's a trap. Uh, that's unfortunate. Another battle here. Summons a sea wave if the sea monster has summoned a fish egg. Interesting. Phantom. Subjugate him. I want to save this eruption. Just in case it summons an egg, this eruption is useful because it's AoE can hurt the eggs. Right, he's about to die, so let's go ahead and uh, just not use any more cards. If I use a card, then no, I can. Well, he's already dead, so. Oh no, he goes next. He goes next after me, so I should kill him. I could have killed him with just this skill of avarice. That would have been smarter. Because I only waste one card. That would have been smarter. Alright. Let's double back now. Oh, we found something. Okay. Level 1 spoiler this should be relatively easy, right? 5 damage to and applies reservation to a random monster. Okay, let's go ahead and put our phantom out there. Smack him up. Let's draw to the good stuff. Subjugate him. Heal myself. Let's go ahead and restore this. Um, he goes next, so I should do this. Ooh, let's kill him with that. Now, I get to do this. Boom, boom, boom. Full life. Mine find two to four resources. I found four goblets. Shout out again to Detective Ashes for sponsoring this video. Link down below, guys. We got an ailment. I got a first ailment. We got malaria. While you have this card in your hand, its mana cost is reduced by one when you play other cards. This, the effect of a card, okay, so this is basically making me draw one less card. This is the final boss, the Dungeon Lord. Let's do it. Oh, there's a treasure there too. Ooh. Holy. Level 2 Lich. And the next turn, players draw one only, only one card. Alright, so first and foremost, I need my Phantom. Where's my Phantom? Yikes. Um. Alright, let's attack him. Wait, I'm only drawing one card. That's terrible. If I do my generation, it's also halved. But I'll get it out of my deck. I only draw one card? That's tragic. Let's go ahead and do the big old 15 to his face. What is he doing now? 17 a skeleton? Ghouled or stitched, okay. Like if I can draw cards, I'm happy. Let me draw cards. There's the phantom. I 
I play more cards, I make malaria cheaper. The malaria makes me draw less cards. Okay, now we are in fear form, so my subjugation is cheaper, which is fantastic. Let's go ahead and subjugate him, because I do not want him to do that draw one less on me. I don't know if the effect still... I think, yeah, it doesn't. He's doing 40 damage. Whoa, obedience is actually nuts. Why is this thing looking like this? When he dies, he summons a, a skeleton. Ah, oh, he's... He's directing nothing to himself, so if I do this... I can play Malaria for free, so I'm going to do this just to get this out of the deck. And Malaria can play for free. Whew. And that's the beauty of... Oh, no! <laughs> that means Obedience did too damage to him. What a waste. What a waste. Oh, what a waste. I draw one card only. One card only, guys. Can you believe it? One card. Silence will cross that bridge when we come to it. Let's go ahead and put regeneration on myself, even though it is halves. It's currently halved. He's about to summon a, a ghoul, but I'm about to kill the lich, so this is fine. As long as I get a card draw, I'm happy. So I'm going to go ahead and subjugate him. And I'm going to go ahead and smack this guy in the face. Beautiful. Just meet him now. Erupt, and then we kill him. Gorgeous. Two keys. 18 gold. 15 ash. Alright. Um, let's go ahead and do this. Beautiful. This contains 45 gold and something. Two cards. Two cards. Whoa, okay. Stable illusion. Increases the phantom strength by two. The phantom loses three health points less each turn, but no less than 15. Apply obedience on all opponents for one turn and increase their crit chance by 40% for two turns. They will each use a strike on an ally or themselves. Oh my god, that sounds insane. It's expensive though. I still think that sounds insane. I'm taking it. Can I choose one? Only two? Okay, only one. It showed me the two thing, but... I'm taking it. Ooh, nice. I so I, I gotta discard this, I think. Just right click this, delete this. Take this. And let's get out of here. I wanna see if the things are still out there. They're not. Alright boys, this is the final boss time. So we gotta go ahead and renew everything, including the malaria. So we have these goblets, which are good for merchant. So we can go ahead and upgrade. Allows you to buy two rare recipes from the merchant. We can go ahead and get more rest from the tent or improved exchange rate. Exchange rate sounds pretty good. It also allows you to sell resources for gold, which is, sounds pretty good later on. But I like to expand the storm. So later on, this is going to be... <clears throat> I have 6 to 12 options to buy from, so I'm going to go ahead and do this. Is there any recipes I can buy from? Can buy another phantom so we can have more than one phantom right seems useful but i don't already have one i can craft so let's go ahead and see what we can craft well first of all, i want to craft this i don't have ashen ah i can summon another phantom card or i can just summon the ice shield which is not bad contrary to case i want to 
Is it how can I get Ash? Can I get Ash? Also, these are some traits that I would love to get. But I don't have any ore for this man. I could also upgrade more cards instead of with my Ash. I could upgrade my existing cards, but no, nah, I really want to craft something. I can cure this ailment for 20 gold, but I didn't get that upgrade. So aim and healing, unfortunately. I can buy another speed thing, which is fantastic. Let's do that. Now we have two speed. Uh, that's the whole purpose of my upgrade, right? Let's see what this guy is offering me. I can burn, so I can burn the malaria now for 15 gold. So I don't draw into it? Sure, why not? And let's go ahead and uh, craft this so we have something for the fight. And hopefully we get enough ash to make contrary chaos because that's a beautiful, beautiful thing. We have three keys at our disposal as well. Oh, we're ready to go, guys. This is the chapter one boss. He wants to do two discards two random cards from the player's hand to the deck of ashes. Takes double damage until next turn. So if I get subjugation, that would be fantastic because I want to avoid this. Unfortunately, I can't. But he's going to take double damage. So on the bright side is that I leave everything here. So he has to... He chooses what he discards. Let him discard your cards. It's fine. But he's taking double damage. And that lasts until next turn. So when I go ahead and do subjugation, not only is he not going to summon a giant rat, which he was going to do before, but he's going to take 80 damage because of that effect from Thunder Roar. And I can also increase the crit of my Phantom to hopefully... Um, get a crit to his face. 80 damage. Incredible. Takes it from the next strike attack. So I'm not, he's, not, he's not striking me so that I don't have to waste this yet. Um, we can go ahead and do this. Put the rejuvenation on myself. And do two flash to his face. Gorgeous. You can summon a little rat. That's totally fine by me. Ah, the phantom hit him, which is perfect, because now I'm going to go for the kill. This does 5 damage to everybody. I wish we killed the rat. Or I could just do 15 to his face. Now that guy's dead, and now it's just me and the rat, which should be totally manageable. This guy's trying to do 10 damage. Well, take an ice shield and slow your speed down, sir. So now he's going to do less damage to me, and he's also going to be slowed. Which is useful. Let's go ahead and subjugate him. Smack him. GG! We got 200 gold and 100 ash. Man, we finally have some ash. I love it, I love it. And there was the final boss for chapter 1. Alright, so that was chapter one of Magnus the Jester. Thanks again to Deck of Ashes for sponsoring this video. It's been a while since I've done exclusive videos to YouTube. It's nice to sometimes just be talking to you guys and you guys only. Hope you guys are doing great. I would like to do more of these in the future. Uh, I do enjoy the exclusive experience. There are going to be a lot more chapters for me to do. I don't know how many chapters there is exactly, but there's more chapters for me to do. Flesh out my deck and then finally meet Lady of Death. So that's going to be fun to do. Um, 
I'm looking forward to seeing more of this game. I know they're gonna make a new character later on this year, so that's gonna be fun as well. Remember, don't forget to check out the link down in the description below to download and buy the game. It is a link to the Steam store page. Hope you guys have a great one. Enjoy. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.